Hey everyone, it's Daniel, and in this part of the course, we are going to create the knowledge base response workflow. So this is the workflow that actually powers your questions. So if a user asks a question, so for example, they ask something like, what is voice flow? And I don't have a trigger for it on the canvas already. So for example, it's not book a demo and it's not submit a ticket. I want to create a final workflow here that is a catch all. So any questions can go here to be answered by the knowledge base. So we're going to start off by creating it. We're going to call it knowledge base response flow. Now for the trigger, we want to use a special one called none or fallback. So you might not see none, it might be fallback. So you're going to click on that. And this is going to now act as a catch all. So if the user asks a question that we don't have an intent for on the canvas, so it's something outside of book demo or submit a ticket, it's going to just fall back to this none intent. So let's just rename this to knowledge base and we're going to continue building. So we're going to build out this flow in three parts. And the way that we're going to do it is we're going to mimic how a human would think. So if you ask me a question like who is the CEO of voice flow, the first thing I'm doing is I'm adding any context of our conversation to that question in my head. So you might say, who's the CEO of voice flow? And I'm thinking currently. So the first thing I want to do is add some sort of like question optimizer that can add in context from our conversation and reformat this question into something that is better reflecting of what you're actually trying to get to. So let me just add a quick note here that says optimize question. Now, the second part is going to be about searching for information. So now that I have your question, I want to figure out what information that I have to be able to answer that question. So we'll just create a second one here that says search for information. And finally, I want to actually summarize and combine all that information into a answer for you. So we're going to have a third part that says create answer. So this is now going to give us a structure of how we're creating our flow. And this is a pretty good framework to think about creating flows in general is what would you do as a human to be able to answer this? We're going to start off with optimizing a question. Now, what we want to do here is we want to basically take the question that was asked and put it into the context of the conversation. So to do that, we are going to go to logic here. We're going to hit the set step and we're going to use a type of set called a prompt set. And so this is going to allow us to create a prompt that uses an AI to say, hey, take the context of the conversation, the question and provide a better question. And we're going to save that to a variable that we'll use later. So to select a prompt, we're going to hit create prompt. And this is going to open up our prompt editor. Now I'm going to copy a bunch of information over so we're not wasting time. But the first thing I want to do is just give this a title, optimized question. And then we are going to go in and give it a description that this prompt optimizes the question using memory. The system prompt is going to be here. And now we're going to chuck our big prompt uh, right over here. This prompt you can find in any template project. I'm just recreating it for you. But it says you are an AI assistant specialized in creating a question. And it's given a couple key criteria that the question must follow to be really good for vector search. And finally, I've given it an example of how do common processes work for users. So now what I want to do is I'm going to actually run this to see what it comes out with. And yep, I like this. So what I'm going to do is just add this to the conversation and I'm going to start giving it a couple more examples. Let's now do another one here. Okay, great. Now let's run this again. And yeah, I like this too. Great. So now we've given it two examples. So now we're going to give it the kind of final prompt, which actually has the user's question. So let's add in a conversation history here. So it has the memory of the conversation and I'll just drag this to right above this final prompt. And in the final prompt, we are going to say, hey, here's the user's actual last utterance. So this is last utterance is a variable. And so if I wanted to add this in here, I'm just going to use curly bracket and I'll just find last utterance. So this is the last thing the user said. It's automatically stored here. And I'm just telling it to say, hey, you know what? Take a deep breath and actually come up with the, with the question that best match answers that. So now if I run it, because I have a variable here, it's going to ask me to test it. So I'm going to say, who is the CEO of VoiceFlow? And now the output is a better formatted question that gives a lot more detail. So who's the current chief executive officer of voice flow company that does this? So this is a bit extra. So maybe let's play around with the model here. So I want to do GPT 3.5 turbo tokens looks good. Let's try this out. CEO of voice flow. Yep. Cool. I, I like this question. I think this is solid and I might just go ahead and beef up some of these examples here. So let's just make this one a bit more robust. Let's make this one a bit more robust. And now let's rerun it. And I can see that cool. It gave me a slightly different answer. I like this. Latency is okay. Tokens are good. I can play around with that to get it faster, but this is pretty good so far. So if I hit X here, 
it'll take me uh, into my prompt CMS, but I just want to go back to my workflow here. And now you can see that I've got a set step here um, where I've actually, I can select the prompt I created and apply it to an output variable. So the variable I want to output it to, and you might have to create these variables if you're creating this from scratch, but I'll just create a variable called optimized question. And so now I've got a optimized question based on the conversation history and everything the users asked. So I'm going to do a second thing. I'll do prompt again, and this one is going to be language. So I've already created this in the prompt CMS tutorial, so you can check that out. But this is basically determining the language that the user is speaking. And I'm just going to save that to a variable called language JSON. Okay. So now I've done the first step here, which is optimizing the question and determining the user language. So this is really powerful. Again, this allows you to do computation behind the scenes. The next thing I want to do is actually search for information. So to do this, I am going to use this step called the KB search step. I'll drag this out. And this basically takes a question and it looks through our knowledge base to find relevant information. And so if we take a look at our knowledge base, I've got a bunch of docs in here. So you want to make sure that you add data sources if you haven't already. But going back into our workflow, Let's just test this out. So if I something like, actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug the optimized question that we just made in here. So the question will be optimized question. And we can link this up. And I wanna save this to the variable called chunks. So uh, I'm gonna tell it to return maybe four pieces of information and let's test this out. So what is voice flow? And I'll hit preview. Now this is gonna search through our knowledge base and it's gonna try and find information it thinks is relevant. And you can see here, it found some piece of information and it gave it a score, a relevancy score of about 74%. So that's pretty good. It feels that like this is pretty confident that this is answering my question about what is voice flow. But let's try asking something else. I want hot dog. So I can see here that the chunk score is a lot lower. So it's 20%, um, which means that the AI is, yeah, this probably isn't actually relevant to your question. So what I can do here is I can create a not found path because I don't want it to give an answer if it doesn't find good information. So let's set the chunk score at 30%. And so if it can't find relevant information, it'll take a not found path. Let's say a message, I don't have an answer. Let's just test this out so far, just to see how it works. If I hit run here, it's gonna take me to the homepage. I'm gonna say something like, what is voice flow? And let's pull out this little nub on the side here to test out this is working. And cool. So you can see here that A, it jumped to our fallback intent, which is great. The next thing it did was it ran through these steps. So you can see over here that it optimized my question to what specific features, et cetera. And it also found the language. So if I look at language JSON here, it says that I'm speaking English. So it did this processing behind the scenes. The next thing it did was it actually found the chunks. So it said four chunks received and it was saved to variable. And I can see that the chunks are right here. Great. Then the conversation just ended because I haven't connected it anywhere. But let's try this out again to see what happens. Let's say I want a hot dog. Okay, so you can see that it still optimized the question. It still said I'm speaking English. You can see that it optimized it to ingredients for a hot dog, but it hit my threshold of didn't find relevant information and went down the not found path. So on a good track so far, let's keep moving forward here. And so what we're gonna do now is get into the powerful part of creating an answer. So for this, I want to do something and actually I wanted to process the information and display the response to the user. So what I'm gonna do is rather than use a set step, which I did here, and this was just to save it to a variable, I'm gonna actually use a prompt step. So this is very much the same thing uh, that we're doing here where I'm gonna create a prompt, but it's gonna actually display the output to the user. Now, I've got a prompt saved here, but again, let's go ahead and just give this a title. Create answer, a little description. We're gonna give it a little system prompt here. And then what we're going to do is I have a prompt saved. I'm just going to add in here. And here what we're doing is we're just saying, answer the user's question. Here are some rules to format it. And then I've given it the information below. So it's got the last utterance. It's got the chunks, so all the information that we received. And it's got the language. So I'm basically telling the AI to use the question the user asked, use the chunks that were provided, and make sure that the, the answer is in their language. The thing I also want to add is conversation history. So I want to make sure that the AI has the conversation memory that it can actually use. Let's just hit X here and we can see in the canvas, I've got a nice and neat prompt that's used here. We're going to connect it up the optimized question and now we should be good to go. So if I hit run here and I ask the same question of what is voice flow, it's going to jump through and you can see that it went through all the steps we showed before and it answered it, but it looks like the answer is a different language and it's cut off. So let's hop in here to figure out why. 
So first off, let me try a different model to see if that helps. So this is Claude Haiku right now. I want to go GPT-40 Mini. And the reason it was cut off is I don't have enough tokens here. I'm living to get to 128. So let's just increase these up to, let's say, 350. And let's try this out again. Okay, it's running through. And awesome, this time we have a much, much better answer. So the model was better, I had more tokens. And what's great here is that it gives me a really nice formatted list. So we don't want the conversation to end, of course. So instead we're going to take a button step, drag it below, and I can add buttons here or I can just leave a blank and it'll just listen. But now what this will allow me to do is actually create a loop for follow-up questions. So going back here, so now that I have an answer, I can say, tell me more about number five and what's cool here is because i have that optimization question block at the beginning it's going to be able to go through my question again and actually combine this with memories so i asked tell me more about number five but my optimized question step here actually used the conversation history and made a better question so what specific security standards and measurements does voice will have so this is a way better question that will actually return results and that's why this optimization part is really important because if you just said, tell me more about number five, there's no context when you're searching the knowledge base, but this question is very clear on what the context is and I'm able to provide a good answer for the user. So just to finish this off here, uh, instead of saying I don't have an answer, let's do the same thing where we have a prompt and we're gonna create a no answer found prompt. Give it a title, give it a description, and the actual message is gonna be super easy. So. Su Nothing fancy here. We're just gonna say that we don't have the actual response. And we'll just make sure that this is GPT-40 mini as well, and that it has enough tokens, and we should be good to go. So now we've got a really robust KB response flow. So let's just clean this up a bit to make it look a bit nicer. So I'm gonna give block titles here. I'm gonna make sure this is blue. I'm gonna make this red as an error path. And great, so we are done. Now we have a really robust knowledge base response flow that a user can go through and they can type in different languages. It'll provide them answers and different results. So if I just said here, PA voice flow, so this is in Spanish, it's gonna be able to detect that I'm speaking Spanish and it's gonna actually give me the answer in Spanish as well. So you can see it jumped here and the answer is fully in Spanish. But if I said speak French, and tell me again that it went and translated this to French. So super cool. If you're able to master this, like all the techniques that we just used here and add your own flavor to them, you're gonna become a voice flow master or a voice flow power user in no time. So that's it. If you have any questions, hit up our Discord community. So if you go to your workspace and hit community, this is a community of experts uh, that can help you utilize voice flow. You can also hire an expert. So these are experts in the community uh, that are masters at voice flow uh, that you can find on our experts page and you can actually bring them in to help build out your project for you. So that's all and we'll see you on the next tutorial.